The United States has imposed sanctions on an Omani national and several companies that Washington says are linked to Iran. The U.S. Treasury Department described the individual as an oil smuggler. It has also targeted four firms, two based in Oman, one Liberian and another in Romania, citing their alleged support for Iran's Islamic Revolution Guards Corps. The measures freeze all the assets the people and firms have in the U.S. and bar American companies from doing business with them. Tim Anderson is the director at the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies and joins us now out of Sydney. Tim, welcome. It's good to see you. What's your take on Washington's sanctions targeting Iranian interests? Thank you. Well, yes, this, I think we should be clear about one thing this is not sanctions. Uh, these are economic warfare measures. They are attempts to place tens of millions of people in the entire West Asian region under siege until they surrender. And, and they're illegal for three reasons. The first is they attempt to coerce political change across the region. They aim to hurt entire populations. And they hurt third parties as well. So uh, regimes like the ones in Europe that don't have the independence to act against the US will pay fines for them doing business with people there. But it is really siege warfare, and we should call it what, what it is. Tim, do you think the sanctions will have the effect that the United States and its allies in West Asia desire? In the short term, they will hurt people. And that is what the US wants to do at the moment. It wants to punish the populations that have successfully resisted the, the various wars of the so-called New Middle East. Um, they attempt to dissuade people from joining in with the resistance networks. And I think it's pretty clear that they're failing, but they're going to hurt people, no doubt. Will it change Iran's foreign policy? No, there's no chance that they're going to change Iran's foreign policy. They've failed in Syria too. They've failed in Afghanistan. They're failing in Iraq. They're failing in Palestine. They're failing in Yemen. But nevertheless, they persist in trying to hurt people, to try and slow down or delay um, the inevitable defeat of this uh, bloodbath of wars that's been going on for more than two decades. Right. It's no secret that the United States, or let's say it's no secret that Iran stands in the way of the United States and Israel's hegemonic plots in West Asia. Do you see that as the reason why we see sanctions and, as you said, economic ter terrorism, as some also Iranian officials call it, against Iran? Well, Iran is the, the largest independent state which gives very strong support to the resistance in Palestine, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen. And so, yes, for that reason, Iran is a particular source of the resentment of the US and its colony Israel in the region. Um, but of course, remember these types of siege measures, now let's not call them sanctions, they're applied against Lebanon and Syria and Iraq and Yemen and of course the Palestinian people are under siege. So Iran is at the center of it because it's the strongest, it's the leader of the, of the axis of resistance. Okay, so Tim, do you see these siege measures also perhaps being tied to the Iran nuclear talks which could resume under a new Iranian administration? Well, in my opinion, that nuclear deal is dead, um, largely because the U.S. was not able to simply go back and admit a mistake um, that Trump had made. Um, but they're looking for a plan B. It's clear the Israelis want a plan B. They're finding it very difficult to find one. But I think these third party measures might be an attempt to try and prevent normalization on the part of some of the other uh, let's say, less committed regimes like in Europe and other parts of the world. They're trying to prevent um, a, uh, a, an onslaught of, of recognition of um, the legitimate governments in the Middle East, basically. They're trying to delay the day that they will be forced to retreat from the region as they are, have been forced to retreat from Afghanistan now with their tail between their legs. Thanks a lot, Tim, for your thoughts and contribution. Tim Anderson there, Director at the Centre for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us live out of Sydney.